Welcome to That Business Show 2.0 with your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. New episodes each weekday morning, 9 a.m. at thatbusinessnetwork.com via our video stream. And also you'll find us on iTunes and on YouTube. Today we're talking with Melvin Marsh. He is a certified hypnotherapist. And you can learn more at afterhourshypnotherapy.com. So it's all about hypnotherapy on today's program. So Melvin, welcome to the program today. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about your background, a certified hypnotherapist. I know some people can come in and out of this industry with uh, less than stellar accreditation, but tell me a little bit about your background and what some other people are doing too. Uh, well, first let's discuss what a, a lot of other people are doing and how my background is, is different. Uh, there are a, a lot of very, very sketchy fly, basically fly by night type show, um, type, uh, type classes you know, that are, you know, you show up for a weekend and you learn a few things and then they label you as a certified hypnotherapist. That's nice. You know, there are other people that do it, it, it do it in a week. That's nice that, that you know, you're still not, you're, you, you're still barely covering anything. Mm -hmm. I went to Hypnosis Motivation Institute College of Hypnotherapy. I grad, I have my, a, a, a basically college diploma, an honors college diploma, uh, in 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 basic in basically you know hypnotherapy, where I had to do 300 you know lecture slash clock hours before I hit master hypnotist, then an additional 200 hour internship before I got accredited or got certified um, by uh, you know the hypnotherapists union, um, which is the highest you know and, and most prestigious most strict. Um, certifying agency in the United States. So I already came out with, ba with basically 500 hours of, of work behind me. Okay, so people need to pay attention to the, uh, you know, the credentials of people that are claiming to be hypnotherapists, something that I wasn't uh, aware of. I've, I've uh, had you know, hypnotherapists on my show before, but they've never gotten into the accreditation uh, process of it. Hypnotherapy in general, describe what this practice is. What is hypnotherapy? Hypnotherapy has been around for several thousand years. It is basically the, 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 the um, experience of taking somebody, putting them in a nice altered state, they feel very, very relaxed, very, very comfortable, and trying to work on whichever issue they happen to come to you with. For example, uh, one of my most common requests is actually stress management. So they come in, they you know sit on my recliner or or virtual, actually, I, I am able to do uh, Skype and Zoom, um, have them sit in their recliner at home, and I talk a little bit about what basically brings them in, and they sit down in their recliner, they get themselves very comfortable, and then I start doing an induction, and I start relaxing them, and once they get fairly relaxed, I start putting in other suggestions. You know, for example, people with social anxiety. I've already kind of relaxed them with the induction, but now that I, if I know they're having social anxiety, excuse me, I might take them and future pace a situation where they're gonna have to go and hang out with, you know, 20, 30, 40 people. They're going to a party or something. And as they start to future pace this, they become more, you know, I, I try to re relax them and make sure that, you know, the, the induction that I used, I actually am reinforcing this induction because the induction is what's called a progressive relaxation. That's my personal favorite induction. Um, I do that with all my anxiety people and I start teaching them how to do it on their own. And to the point where, okay, now you're about to see, see a stressful situation. Well, you can also pick, you know, if you picture that ball going through your body, you know, and every time that you start to feel a little stress, that ball appears, relaxing you. Mm -hmm. And eventually this does work to reduce somebody's anxiety. When I first, very first time I ever 
was hypnotized um, by a quote professional, as in somebody who actually got properly trained. Uh, I was going in for anxiety. Um, anxiety, I, I had a horrible, you know, assault that just occurred to me. Um, and you know, I had very severe post-traumatic stress. Very, very severe. And um, I worked with this hypnotherapist and, you know, you started to see just a little bit of relaxation, you know, th that day I felt a little bit better. Then by the next time, I saw him, I felt even more better, you know, and let's just say I no longer have an anxiety problem. My post-traumatic stress has gone into almost complete remission. How long did it take you in terms of treatments to to, to get the, you know, cured or at least recovered to where you are today? Um, well, it, it really, he was working on multiple things all at the same time, mm -hmm. but as far as the actual anxiety situation, um, and, and we never use the word cur cured in, in hypnotherapy. We, we just can't do that. But we do say that the symptoms reduced within the first time I, the, the, basically right after my first session. Very nice. Very reduced nice. even more the next session. By the time I was done, uh, I was done, uh, done with this guy. And technically speaking, I'm not even still done with him because now he actually is helping me with my own hypnotherapy business. He fixed several old prob problems that uh, had been sitting there for, for years. I mean, you're talking about one of the issues had been sitting there for 30 years, over 30 years. And he was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this issue. Let's knock this out. And we're knocking it out today. And he knocked it out, you know, in the, that session. And that was a very, very severe phobia that I had. That's interesting that you uh, say that you suffered from anxiety because I myself uh, suffered from anxiety attacks in my early 20s. And while I didn't see a hypnotherapist, I did come across an older lady who took me kind of under her wings and I confided in her with some of the uh, of problems that I was having. And she would kind of use probably some type of, you know, hypnotherapy techniques, although she wasn't a hypnotherapist, but putting me into a relaxation mode, getting me to say things over and over again. And those began to ease uh, those anxiety uh, related uh, symptoms. And to this day, I'm pretty much anxiety uh, free. I have, you know, an issue here and there. Uh, but I think that's probably along the same lines as what you're doing with hypnotherapy. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, 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 you're absolutely correct. Uh, some of the uh, techniques actually will involve you repeating yourself, you know, having the other person repeat what you're saying, you know, constantly while you are you know, tr basically trying to get out whatever you're trying to, to work on. That was one of the techniques that um, we used for that annoying phobia that had been sitting there. And I tell you that if I had not trusted that man, there is no way I would have let that let anybody else do that to me. Wow, incredible. And so up until that point, were you uh, you weren't in the field of hypnotherapy then. You discovered hypnotherapy be as a patient then. Am I getting that right? You're close. I had I um the very first time I it ever had been suggested to me uh was by another a different therapist. And I said, "No. There's no way, no way, no way." Um and I had I left and and after a few months when I said, "You know, I'm so desperate on, on anxiety. I need to learn something." Uh, I at least took a class that was designed for people who really didn't, who just wanted to like learn a little bit. And I certainly wasn't a hypnotherapist then. I, I did take that class and I said, well, maybe this really can help me. It basically knocked out my fears. And I went and I contacted a hypnotherapist that looked like it was going to work. And right around that, that time, um, you know, I said I wanted to take another class. I did take another class. But, uh, but I still wasn't a hypnotist by any stretch of the imagination. But I did meet my hypnotherapist right as I was beginning to at least be curious about the, sub the subject. So um, he was there near basically at the beginning. I, had not, I, I think I did my first successful induction like the, a few days after I met him and it was completely by accident. I was basically mimicking uh, somebody else. Now, you've treated uh, anxiety uh, uh, successfully. Uh, what about other afflictions 
such as uh, pain management. And I bring that up because I had a discussion this week with somebody who you know treats people uh, you know in pain management, and you talk about you know exercise and pills and alternative therapies, but we don't talk about hypnotherapy. Can hypnotherapy be a you know a relief for people suffering from pain? That's actually one of my areas that I like to work on the most. Um, I mean, if we ever want to look at simply the history of modern hypnotherapy, uh, you know, Milton Erickson, who is by far one of the greatest hypnotherapists ever, he suffered from chronic pain. He'd spend up to eight hours a day doing self-hypnosis just so he could work. Uh, I, you know, I, um, you know, I've gone through a root canal just using hypnotherapy. I didn't know at the time what I was doing, but I did enter trance state. Apparently, uh, apparently I was a natural hypnotist and just, I, I had no medication when I was doing a root canal. <laughs> That's incredible right there. Uh, did you intend for that to be that way? You just didn't want to take uh, the medicine? I, did, I wanted the medicine. <laughs> right. the, med the doctor was, um, had issues with me for other reasons. Uh -huh. um, I'm, let's, let's put this out there. I'm a female to male transsexual. I live in the South. I'm not going to get pain medication. They're going to let me suffer. Wow. Seri I'm not joking. Seriously. Uh, and that was a situation with a dentist. I had to have a root canal. I wasn't allowed to have pain meds. I didn't know that until right before. And then all of a sudden I said, you know, uh, you know, I, I already know how to turn off parts of my body. Uh, you know, I learned biofeedback. You know, I did... You know, I gave I gave birth to my daughter without medication. Oh, can I shut off the the area that he's working on? And I just completely freaked. I kind of freaked out for a second, and, but I went through and I found the area, and it just went. Whoop. How long did it take you to get into that state? I mean, were, um, were you kind of pressured, like, oh, shoot, I got to do this I, right I now? Was, <laughs> I was feeling pressured, <laughs> and I got in, and I basically, in order to get through, and basically. I checked each nerve until it hit the correct one. <laughs> right. uh, I had basically less than five minutes to, before I found from from the time that I found out I was not getting medication to the time that he had to work. And you got yourself into that state. So for me to for me to freak out enough to go, oh my god, what <laughs> do I do? To go, okay, this is what I can do, and then trying to check each individual nerve before I found the thing. I said, okay, I think we got it. And then when he <laughs> pressure I was like yep I think so let's turn it off the rest of the way <laughs> that's like incredible the story guy right thought there. I was asleep uh, because I wasn't moving uh, I was not moving because I had thrown myself purposely into a state where I where I was not going to react because if I had, I probably would have slugged him. <laughs> Hold that point right there. I got to take a, a break. Currently talking to Melvin Marsh, a certified hypnotherapist. Uh, can help you with anxiety, pain, uh, and a lot of other uh, things too that maybe traditional medicine cannot help you with. Visit uh, him at afterhourshypnotherapy.com. Coming back from a break, I want to talk a little bit with him about past life regression. I had a little bit of an experience with that. He's uh, certified in that field as well. So we'll touch on that area of hypnotherapy when we come back from the break on that. Hi, welcome to Jaegers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Jaegers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tile, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area.
Welcome back to That Business Show 2.0 with your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes a show business. Today, we're talking about hypnotherapy with our certified hypnotherapist, Melvin Marsh. Learn more at afterhourshypnotherapy.com. Melvin, you're a certified past life uh, regression uh, uh, hypnotherapist as well. Correct me if I use those words wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I... Certified past life therapist. Past life or, therapist. Sorry, it, you're a past life it, therapist. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I <laughs> uh, interviewed a person on my program a, a couple of years ago, and I'm intrigued by that topic. And I went into uh, to her office and went through a session but I just couldn't get into that zone. And so for me, it was a failed session. But take me through past life regression and what it is and how real is this? And also how easy or not easy is it to put all people into that trance state? Well, let's let, let's start um, at the beginning. How easy or hard is it to put everybody into a trance? Everybody does go into a trance. Um, yeah, it's a perfectly natural state. If you've ever experienced highway hypnosis, You've been in a trance. Have you ever been caught in a uh, good book or a movie or something, and you didn't hear your spouse calling you? Hmm? Guess what? You were in a trance. Isn't that the same as being focused, though? Like I was focused. It is, it's a state of basically in, uh, uh, you both have intense focus and intense relaxation. Okay. Uh, if you you know it's it's very similar also to that that time right before you fall asleep. That's a, a, a trance state as well. It's, you're just hopefully not in it very long before you go to sleep. Um, so it is a completely natural state. Everybody can do it. Now, the thing is, is that not all hypnotherapists are, tra are, are trained equally. They're not all particular. See, some are very, very questionable, you know, and it, a lot of it depends on, on training. Now, if you're a good hypnotherapist, you will have basically a 100% induction rate. Now, some people might, take, might go out in, a, in 30 seconds some people might go in several minutes, but there are a lot of ways to actually tell if somebody's in a trance or not. I tend to watch their eyes. Um, if you know, if they go one in one direction, they they're in a medium state of trance. If you go, they, if they do another thing, they're in a high, uh, in a deeper state of trance. Um, so that's what I do. Uh, you know, past life regression. Now, do we know if it's real or not? I'm not, you know, if, if y'all can prove that it's real, that's great. I don't really care because it's not my, you know, my, my, my thing. Um, I am, a, you know, I do it. I like it. I, it's a lot of fun for me to listen to somebody else tell the story for a change. <laughs> but, you know, I just sit there and quietly ask questions. You know, it's to me, it's somebody, it's tell, somebody telling me a story. I, it doesn't matter if it's real or not. Do you it's think it's just some people are invoking just some subconscious thoughts and putting them together in a story? Uh, and do everybody that goes through you know, like a, a regression uh, a therapy with you, do they all come out with some type of story? I wasn't able to get hardly anything because I just, I don't know, maybe it's just my mind. I have a problem with overthinking and, and rapid thought. Yeah. I just can't ever get my mind to shut up. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my problem. I mean, that's a fault of your, of, of your hypnotherapist. Because your hypnotherapist needed to give you time to learn to calm down your mind. She needed to, she, I think you said it was a she, was it a yes. she? Mm -hmm. Okay. She needed to train you to start to calm your mind and don't progress past a certain point in the, um, in, in the therapy, the, or whatever you would like to call it until she got you relaxed and quiet. Basically, I, the only person I have not had come out with some form of story was this person who uh, actually had some some issues with vi with uh, visualizing themselves? They could visualize everybody else but themselves. But he, but she really really enjoyed the fact that she had she was basically like dancing in a in a in a whole bunch of colors. Which, in all fairness, she was an artist. So you know maybe that was the the, the closest thing to a past life regression was that we were going to have with her. But you know it worked, and and she enjoyed the experience. Now. Um, can I prove that past lives are real? I cannot prove that past lives are real. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. I work with a lot of Buddhists and Wiccans who, who to whom this is part of their, their religious tradition. You know, reincarnation is a thing. Who am I to judge what their religion states is acceptable or not? 
definitely a fascinating uh, topic and something that I spend a lot of time just thinking about. And sometimes I'll delve into you know some of my uh, you know uh, uh, thoughts on this uh, on this program. But uh, you know the, the power of the mind and what's uh, you know out there is is just something I'm, I'm very very fascinated with. And hypnotherapy is just one of those tools that kind of help us get in touch with that other that that you know connectivity that exists in this universe on a level that we don't always fully understand. But it can be used for so much good. Uh, like you said, it, it's treated your your anxiety. You've seen it help people with pain. What are some of the other uses of hypnotherapy that it can be oh, used for? Oh my, the uses. Um, we already know you. I've already mentioned the anxiety and the post traumatic stress. I've already mentioned the pain. Um, stop smoking is is one of the main things that people come to see us for. Um, weight loss. I don't really I don't really tend to see a lot of weight loss people, but I do have them. Uh, in pre in increased confidence, motivation. I mean, I have a huge list of stuff that I've treated on, on, on my on my website. Now, with me, because I ha I do carry malpractice insurance just like any other mental health provider, um, which a lot of hypnotherapists won't take that that mental that that malpractice. I, I do take it because I take myself very seriously as a as a hypnotherapist. Um, but as, as in the rules. You know, some things state that I need to go get a medical referral for, and I'm quite happy at doing that. I've helped uh, relieve some people's uh, irritable bowel uh, syndrome. They, 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 you know, they tell their doctor this is what they were planning. The doctor laughed at it, said, "You know, sure, you want to go try the hypnotist? Go right ahead." The uh, hypnotist, within like four sessions. The person is no longer having nearly as bad of symptoms. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just that's just one thing. Does hypnotherapy attack like a root cause, or are all our afflictions, whether it's you know physical or mental or anxiety based, does it all come back to some type of traumatic incident that we we may or may not even be aware of? Uh, I've never seen that. Um, I mean, there are certainly situations where it is, but everything is is very different. Every time I do a script on somebody. It's it's customized to them. Um, you know, people who, you know who who come to me for weight loss. There could be ten thousand reasons why you're why you have a weight loss, a weight issue. And very rarely have I ever seen them come back to a trauma. I mean, once in a while, but you know, and the trauma. I am certified in trauma recovery. If it's too much of a trauma, I have to refer out to psychology uh, to get a, a, a thing back, so I can work continue to work with them. I know I myself, uh, you know, have issues uh, with weight. For me, I think it comes back to stress. I'm a I'm a stress eater. Uh, you know, it's a comfort food thing for me. And you mentioned at the top of the segment that you treat a lot with the stress. So stress probably mm -hmm. treating that can probably help you in a lot of different areas, right? Oh yeah. I mean, when if if you come to me, to my office and I literally have no idea what you're coming in for, or you surprise me on something, stress stress alone. Is such a big, big factor that can fix that, that can affect so many things. Um, that I go and I will start assuming that stress is one of the issues. This, of course, will give me time to research any other issue that you might have that I might not be as familiar with. Mm -hmm. But I will always uh, the first the first time you walk into this office or come on Skype or whatnot, we're going to have a discussion on stress. Uh, we're going to and. I'm going to teach you, you know, the the some some uh, relaxation exercises, and we're going to see if we can, you know, that that alone has helped uh, reduce some of the smoking people. It's reduced some of the weight loss, yeah, you know, the weight issue. Um, that'll, I mean, that alone t tends to do it because if you're no longer stress eating or stress smoking or stress whatever you're doing. You know, if because there's no stress, that that alone is going to make knock stuff down. That isn't, of course, the the thing for everybody, but it can help make things better for a lot of people. But it's not necessarily just specifically stress. That's just one thing that is a common issue. No, I just I just know when you treat tr stress, you can treat a whole lot of other things that kind of kind of come along uh, with uh, stress from you know obesity, high blood pressure, all these different physical elements that all result. Because of this go 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 uh, society uh, that uh, we uh, live in, I always joke that you know I'm gonna go down to Puerto Rico and live here eventually. I spent some time down there, and if anybody's ever been to the islands, 
completely different environment down there. Much less stressful. Fast food is 30 minutes. Uh, there's no such thing as <laughs> stress down there. I, uh, I kind of got addicted to that, uh, that environment that down there. Um, here's, your, here's your stress fact of the day, something I just learned a few days ago. Uh, in January 2017, 80% of people showed at least one sign of chronic stress. Mm -hmm. That was from, uh, um, I think, the APA or yeah. something. No, I don't doubt it. It's it's, it's just uh, it's a part of our society, and it's just this uh, desire for on-demand information. We want it, and we want it now. And so whatever service you're in, you, you feel that stress uh, from our uh, from our culture. You know, There's benefits, but I think ultimately it's a disadvantage uh, to us as a, as a culture. We need to be more accepting and more patient with people because all we're doing is inflicting stress on, uh, on one another. Uh, I got a couple minutes real quick. I just want to close. Uh, you offer, you know, uh, uh, you're based in, uh, in Georgia, uh, but you also do your treatments uh, through uh, Skype, through online. Online, just as effective. It doesn't matter if you're in the, in, um, in the office with you. It, it doesn't particularly matter. Um, you know, provided I have a webcam on you uh, for certain things, some things I can do by phone. But I like having, I like seeing you just in case uh, something does come up. I want to be able to react as fast as I would be able to do in the office. So it is just as effective. Um, actually, if you do me on virtual, I'm slightly cheaper. <laughs> right. I, char I charge to put on pants is effectively what I do. <laughs> gotcha. um, yeah, you can always go to my website and, you know, if somebody is actually interested and they don't want to commit to an, appoint to an appointment, I'm, I'm doing a 30 second uh, or a 30 second, I'm sorry, a 30 minute free consult if anybody from your show wants to um, to, to talk and see if hypnotherapy might be right for you. All right. Well, we'll put that up on the show notes and out in the uh, promotions as well. So we uh, thank you for that offer for our listeners there, 30-minute uh, uh, hypnotherapy uh, session with Melvin Marsh. So we got to wrap it up, Melvin. Great discussion. Thank you so much for being on the program with me today. Well, thank you very much as well. And again, you can uh, learn more at afterhourshypnotherapy.com, afterhourshypnotherapy.com. Catch new episodes of this program each weekday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, thatbusinessnetwork.com, and find us on iTunes, subscribe, and leave a review. It helps the show grow. So you've been listening to That Business Show 2.0 with your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business.